All yep. right. So, getting back to it. Uh, as a recap, uh, you find gentlemen uh, were on a uh, spaceship of, let's say, less than stellar condition. Uh, oh, okay. Stellar. <laughs> Space <that>. joke! Uh, <laughs> um, through some very fine engineering and uh, you know, very tenuous combat to get to places you need to be, you were able to momentarily restore power to the ship and recover your gear, uh, almost having a very lethal encounter in, in that time frame. Uh, through the uh, pursuits of your gear and stabilizing the ship, you found that it was actually in a very vastly decaying orbit of a desert planet. Um, trying to get the escape pods going uh, while the rest of your uh, crew, uh, your party, were searching the hold for any last minute supplies. Um, as you were leaving, you were about to be pursued by a very vicious and deadly foe, likes of which you had not encountered yet. And probably a good thing that you didn't. Uh, you were able to all reach the surface when the escape pods had jettisoned. jettisoned. Um, after doing a quick scan of the area, you had found some marginal shelter from the the torrid heat of the planet, which also, as of note, ha doesn't seem to have a night cycle from the approximate, you know, eight hours that you've been there so far. So the oppressive heat doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon, and that's where we're going to be picking up is you guys in huddled in tenuous safety in what appears to be kind of a rocky uh, cave system um, in a nearby mountain area. Excellent. Now, we spent the night here, like we rested here, so... You, you, you and, rested, your, you know, your communiques are telling you that it's been about eight hours, mm -hmm. um, and so you've all been able to recover from the wounds that you had suffered from the combat. Um, yeah... It's pretty, pretty debilitating for some of you more than others. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, again, to uh, kind of give you a descriptive uh, text for the uh, planet, um, the temperature reads somewhere in the ranges often from 110 to 120. So it's a very, very oppressive heat. Um, your, your individual uh, armor... Uh, has built-in environmental safeties, but they aren't long-term. Checking yourselves over as uh, after kind of getting through this uh, you know, eight-hour period, you're guessing that you probably have about a day before the environmental systems fail, and you take the full brunt of the uh, effects of this planet. Now, there's no any no background radiation, and there is an atmosphere to it that you can breathe, but It'd basically be like taking breaths from the inside of, you know, an oven, like the front of an oven, just mm -hmm. trying to breathe just that hot air. Oof, like breathing in a hairdryer. Yeah, essentially. You're just having a hairdryer full blast right at your mouth, and that's the only hair you're getting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you know, there's... From the short scan that you got, you didn't really pick up anything in the immediate vicinity except for the uh, approximate direction of where the ship had crashed. Because you saw it re-entering in a fiery inferno. The ship? Yeah, 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 we did. Mm -hmm. So, how... You know, we have the approximate direction to it. I'm feeling much better. Are we going to head towards the ship? Or... <clears throat> Anybody else have any ideas? Anything Maybe. to do besides recover our stuff? I have a feeling we need to get off this planet yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, I'd rather not be here, not to... Well, we got that comm here, we can set up a beacon. Hopefully someone will pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, though. But maybe we don't want to be found by certain people. That's true. And one thing is of note, um, checking it over with your uh, engineering check, the, the uh, 
day before. Uh, this is not just uh, in a short range, like planetary uh, communication system. It's going to take an actual, you know, external power supply of more, you know, uh, uh, amplitude than you guys can actually produce yourselves. So you need to find some way of generating power to be able to get this thing online if you're going to use it. Our best bet is finding that ship. Yeah, if you want to get the communicator working, you're going to have to find some sort of a uh, power. Agreed. Power relay. Power Should device. Get, get it up and juiced. Get it up and running. Ship. See what we can find. Yeah, let's go to the ship. Get it. <clears throat> See what we can find. Let's be safe about yes. this. Be yes. very cautious of what we just saw out there. Make sure we don't need the any and everything are loaded before we head out. We should come up with hand signals. I think everybody should have hand signals. Specific yeah. people, formations. Pew, pew. I have mating hands. I could go like this with them. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, love bug. <sighs> That's mine. Well. I'll, uh, you know, eyes on. I'll point hear. my eyes on. Point at where I'm looking. Okay, if anybody yeah, sees no, something, see something, do this. The group's uh, that should be mental acuity Group is just stunning to me right now. I just, I think you're all just such good planners. You know, you picked up on that right away. Let's just go. Let's just go. There's right, no, there's no up. use in planning with you guys. <laughs> Rally up, move out. There we go. All right. So two things. Uh, one, what is your marching order? He's first. Yeah, I'll go he first. Seems like I'll leader. Go first. I think I'll be second to last. Party. I'm always going to take up the rear. I think I'm going to get. Okay, so we'll say... I have my pistol in my left hand and my sword in my right hand. Well, your sword is never out. Oh, that's right. Remember, Remember it's, it's like no a mode of energy, energy unless you're yes. in immediate danger. Okay. Can I try... I'm going to keep my pistol out then. Can I try and... and s from where we are in our cave system and re related to where we saw about where the ship crashed? Because mm -hmm. you said it was like over the horizon where we saw it crash somewhere. Right. It was in sort of a north... Easternly direction, you guys had headed uh, in a westernly direction, if I remember right, uh, to get to the caves. It like said, the uh, systems, I believe. Mountain range north of where we crashed in our pods. Right, okay, so the mountain range was north of your pods. Um, give me give me a survival check as you kind of like <clears throat> step out to the uh, face to kind of reorient yourself. I have a. Well, I was, I was wondering if I could like do something to kind of try and gauge, like, based on movement in the sky, uh, whatever it might be, how long it might take us to get from not here to our destination, but from here to, say, like, a far place that I can see. You mean, like, gauging just, like, heading to, like, the horizon or... The, ter like the terrain of this place, just of getting, like, a... I'm trying to use, like, my, my intelligence and, like, physical science to, like, just study this place and try and get a gauge of what our travel is going to be like if we're going on foot. I mean, uh, survival checks are more what you would use for or, you know orientation and gathering your you know information about an unfamiliar terrain. Okay. So it would be more of a uh, that than a physical science check. Okay. Natural one. Natural one. <laughs> okay. You step outside and you're just like, oh god, ah, oh so hot, blinded by the sun. Oh. Uh, so, a little bit of a little bit of just like sand or dust kicks up in my throat and I <laughs> blinded and bent over coughing for a minute or two. So would anybody else like to? Well, I got a question. Sure. A mechanical okay. question. Yep. I got a game mechanic question. Yep. How many magazines do I have for my pistol? How yep. many did you buy? You have dog fancy. No. Uh, cat then fancy. You have no ammunition. It should come with a magazine, shouldn't it? Nope. Nope. Into really? ammo. But Buy ammo. if you do recall, you did find uh, energy mag magazines, though yours, yeah, I believe, them. is more of a projectile nature. Yes. Yes. Who has those, by the How way? Much those those excess ones. How many do we have? Uh, Three excess? Uh, Four. 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 Four of them? Okay. I don't remember the and price of it. Uh, uh, we'll figure that out later. Right. We'll say that so that's you owe me one magazine's worth of ammo. Well, I mean, I'd be willing to just, like, breach load it the whole time until I find some mags. Well, the ammunition you found was batteries for, you know, laser, laser pistols. Laser pistols. Right. We didn't find any slugs. Well, we found our gear, didn't we? Right, you found your gear. Yes. But, I mean, you, did you, you, you had... Well, I'll, I say you, ammo. I'll say you oh, had... I bought ammo, but I oh, didn't Oh, oh you mean you did have a magazine? Yeah, we'll say you, you had one magazine. Okay. Uh, you, well, sure. Okay. Yeah, that, cool. that usually is implied when you buy your ammo. Yep. 
because it comes in units of magazines or batteries that have a certain amount of charge. Oh, okay. So, so it's not just like boxes of bullets. No, like you didn't. How much? You didn't, how much ammo do you got? How many? How many? How much? About one hundred twenty rounds. I'm at one hundred eighteen. How how many? Like so, your how many does your holds in a magazine of nine? Magazine of nine. Yep. So you just got like a bandoliers of fucking. So we'll we'll say that you have two magazines. Two mags, okay. I'll 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 say you have two mags, so you you know can do that, and then you can reload. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Other than that, it's either that or you have twenty magazines. Yeah, that would be a big so. It, it would be quite excessive. So I we'll have just say that you have like a container of bullets in your in your pack, I'll, and I'll, you have two magazines. Yeah, I'll say this: like I have the equivalent of. 100 shots with my laser pistol. Right. And that's five batteries, but I, I do have like pouches and just. Right, and batteries are a lot more, you know, compact. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, two magazines will say for you. I'm gonna find it. Um, and anybody else, if they would like to do a survival check, yep. to maybe try and direct the group. Because you notice. That 20. Oh. Oh. All right. Nice. You, uh, 24. <laughs> <laughs> What's the total on yours? Uh, for survival. survival, zero. So twenty. Okay, so twenty. Okay. Fourteen and twenty-four. Right. So you concur with his like edict memory because he remembers his hat still on the ship somewhere. Mm -hmm. So your hat. That was that was the big trigger for him. Was like, wait, my hat. Wait, where did my hat go? And he had almost like a unspoken connection of where his hat is. It's like Indiana Not Jones. Sure. <laughs> But you using more pragmatic methods, remembering where you guys went, kind of, you know, yeah, you, you guys indicate, yeah, it's a best guess probably about anywhere from two to three hours on foot. Okay. It's not terrible. It's not too bad. No. No. It's now, easy. Now, like two days yeah, of rations. That's, that's about two, two to three hours as, you know, the... Uh, uh, you know, flat, normal time of travel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you got to remember, you guys are in the desert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's well, that's, it's, shifting sand. It's better than garages. a day and a half or something like that. So right. we that's can manage. True. That's we can true. definitely manage. Yep. So, you guys are all ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Uh, I want to pack up my tent before we leave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I assumed you guys had packed all your stuff up. So, you guys all have your emergency uh, tents. Um, I want to handy. rub the sleep out of my eyes. <laughs> this the sleep sheds away just like you know dust. Turns to dust because it's so dry. <laughs> you have the to dustiest like, kind of like, tears in the galaxy. Uh, I do very, the very dusty. I do the my mating hands like this. Like you want to fuck us? I'm just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> she said you're doing his How mating hands. hands? It's just like there's it's only like six, three other six little of mating hands. People around. How many arms? Two. Two no. big arms, but then he's got the little kind of like things. Little there. finanglers? Yep. And all you can hear is like a little crackle on my... Yeah. It's like a, it's like a low gauge, like, you know, kind of bridging of cards. But then I realized that those are my mating hands, and I got like... Like, whoa! Shameful. What are you doing? <laughs> shameful display. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so shameful. What the fuck are you looking at? So, <laughs> you guys head out. Yeah. You are slowed by the kind of uneven terrain, you know, the heat mirages. About an hour and a half passes, because unfortunately the direction that the ship landed was kind of in the, uh, the the ridge that you guys found shelter in does not go in that direction. So you have to kind of just cross burning sands. The, the Through the environmental protections, you can still feel the oppressive heat. And, you know, it makes you feel like you want to expedite the journey, but... With each step, you know, you're just feeling that kind of all-encompassing, you know, arid nature of this planet. It is not hospitable.